Today on my channel, we are going to be creating a centerpiece that is going to give the illusion that it is floating on air. Stay tuned. For this project, you will need either a glass or an acrylic container. You will need this bowl. I got this from the Dollar Tree. You will need three of these tapered glass candle holders. You will need some floral gel beads and I will place a link in the description box below of where I found these. You will need some bling wrap. We're actually going to be making 13 layers. So I'm using a five layer from the Dollar Tree and an eight layer from Amazon. You're going to be needing this crystal garland that is going to be cut in strings of 11. Of course, you will need a floating candle. You will need a submersible light, any light of your choosing. You will need some vase fillers. I am using blue and white today for this project. You will need, of course, flowers of your choosing, any type or color, your handy dandy tools. Let's get crafting. So the first thing that we're going to do with our bowl is we are going to place some bling wrap under the lip of this bowl. And to do this is going to be very easy. All we're going to do is going with our hot glue and hot glue only, and we're gonna tack pieces of it down using the hot glue. And if you notice when I place it, you can see it better that there is actually a lip or an indentation where that bling wrap is going to be sitting. And so that is a space where we're going to be working or laying this bling wrap down. I'm going to continue going all the way around this bowl, getting back to the other side. And when I'm finished, I will come back and I will show you what it looks like. All right, so to ensure that we are having some continuity between pieces, we are going to do the same thing and lay now our 13 layer bling wrap going around this vase. Now because we're working with two different sizes, or I'm working with two different sizes, I'm going to lay the five layer bling wrap down first going all the way around this base. I'm not going to be using any E6000 glue with this, just using the hot glue. And I'm just going to tack as I go, making sure that that ribbon or that bling wrap is being pulled straight, that is not bunch bunching up, that there are no lumps and humps in it, but that I'm stretching as I'm going and I'm making sure that it is sitting flush at the top of the brim of this vase. And so continuing this process, as I get all the way around to the other side, and as you can see, I'm not using much glue at all because I don't want to use a lot of glue and then the glue seeps through the holes of the bling wrap and then you can see the glue coming through. That's not what we want. So just a little bit of glue in just some very strategic places going all the way around and once you've gotten to the point where you can gauge what you need to cut off to be able to close that gap do that place your glue down to seal it and you would have completed your first layer of bling wrap and so quite simply i'm going to do the same thing now going around the edge or the bottom or I should say rather underneath the first set of bling wrap that we just put down going all the way around the vase and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like all right so now we have the top of our vase blinged out with 13 layers what we're going to do now is elevate this vase by putting it to stand up on three candlesticks now what i'm doing here is i am going to use a turntable which you do not need this but i'm just going to use this turntable to help me as i'm continuing to film this video because what i'm going to do is i'm going to put or rather glue these 
candle holders to the bottom of that acrylic vase and I really don't want to have to wait for the 20 to 30 minutes for this E6000 glue to set so the reason why I'm using my turntable is when I'm finished setting my glue and placing that vase where I want it to sit the turntable is going to allow me to continue working with my beads which is the part that you will see next without disturbing the curing of the e6000 glue to the bottom of that vase and so as you can see i'm going in simply and only with my e6000 glue i am not using any hot glue on this because i don't want this to lump up to clump up and the next thing you know we're crooked and we're dealing with water and it just just becomes a whole issue so my recommendation is to use e6000 glue for this project only and as you can see now I'm placing my acrylic vase on top I'm making sure I have the correct placement and as you can see I'm turning my turntable which is going to help me a lot when it is time now to start placing my beads and so here are the beads that we are using today and what I did was I cut them in strands of 11 starting with the biggest bead first and now all I'm going to do is using my glue gun I am going to put down just a dab of glue and then I'm going to place that biggest bead or the top of my strand in that glue hold it for a few seconds and allow it to set I'm gonna do another one so that you can see just a dab of glue making sure that I'm spacing these chains equidistant one from the other putting my dab of glue down setting my bead in it holding it for a couple of seconds so that it will be able to set I'll do one more so you can see dab of glue putting the bead in the glue holding it so that it can set and if you see what you're realizing is that first gem that we are setting in the glue is kind of cocked off a little bit but that is exactly what we want because when we're finished laying all of these beads going around that vase you're gonna see that it is gonna give the vase almost like a little lip or another dimension of texture and so I'm going to continue this process so that you can see as I go along and when I'm finished I will come back so you can see what the entire process looks like All right, here you have a full view of what this entire vase looks like from the top of our bling wrap all the way down to our crystals. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to build this project using our vase fillers as well as our flowers and our gel beads. And so I'm going in with a blue and white combination of those crystals and I'm just mixing it up a little bit so that there's not too much blue sitting on one side too much white sitting on the next side but a nice equal mix of both and so once that I've done that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my first flower which is just a set of three roses that I have glued down together I use these in another project and so I am using them again and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gel beads and I am going to start to pour them in on top of these roses and so just using a scooper pouring them in on top trying to cover the roses 
but not put too much on one side and not on the other side, which is what you can see is going on here. So I had to switch my hands to make sure I was keeping it nice and even. And once you have placed enough of those beads to cover that rose or whatever it is you're going to be placing in your vase, now I'm going to go in with some water and you're going to see what magically happens. Those beads look like they disappear, don't they? That is, it is, it's awesome. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to build layers as I go, placing my flowers where I need them to be. And once I have placed the flowers where I need them to be, I'm going to, you guessed it, continue to put more of those gel beads on top of those flowers to set them in place. Now, what those beads do is they hold those flowers in place so that they're not either sinking to the bottom or floating all the way to the top. But like I said, when you pour that water in, it makes it look like those flowers are actually suspended in midair. And so now that we have placed that second layer, we go in with a little bit more water pouring that water in slowly because we don't want too many water bubbles in there to give the illusion away. Place another layer of flowers. As you can see, I'm building this up very slowly. Placing my water beads on top of that. And then I'm gonna go in again with some more water. To create that illusion that that hibiscus is just sitting there suspended in that water I think I'm gonna do one last layer of roses yeah one last layer of roses another layer of my gel beads and then I'm going to cover and one of the things you need to understand with these gel beads is that they absorb water I mean these things they are therapeutic to play with I, I really enjoy working with them but a pain in the took us to clean up but one of the things that I enjoy with them is that they absorb a lot of water and so Whenever you are making these centerpieces, you want to make sure that you are not making them well in advance because what's going to happen is that those gel beads are going to soak up that water, which is going to take water out of your centerpiece. And not only that, they're going to expand and fill up or rather I should say get bigger and which is going to help to or not help to because it's not really a help but cause you to lose the illusion of those flowers being suspended in water and so I am going to end this with one last hibiscus I'm covering it so I didn't finish my thought actually Yes, don't use too many of these beads and don't make them too far in advance because <clears throat> it will absorb all of the water that you have in your vase. And once I have placed the final set of gel beads where I want them to be, a little bit more water just to top it off a little. And then... I'm going to place my LED light into that vase. I'm turning it upside down and I have it on fade. So all the different colors are in play, but it is fading it in and out very slowly. And then I'm gonna take finally this bowl I'm going to have to get this in frame for you guys. So let me set my camera and I'll be right back. All right. Now you can see better. And so what I'm saying is not to make your water level too high. But now we're going to take our bowl that we embellished with two strands of bling wrap. 
We're gonna pour some water in it and this is gonna be the home for our floating candles. So you have suspended flowers on the underneath, you have an LED light that is fading in and out different colors and then on top we're going to be setting the tone with romance with a floating candles that is going to create the ambience you want during your wedding reception. And there you have it. So what I'm going to do is let me go set the table, clean up, and I will come back so that I can show you what the entire project looks like. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. On the right, we have the prototype that I created earlier. And on the left, we have the one that we just created together. Isn't it beautiful? I just love the way those flowers look as if they are literally suspended in the air. They are floating on love. And then to top it off, we have a floating candle on top, giving our centerpiece just another dimension of atmosphere, of ambience, of the feeling of love that you're trying to create at your reception or at your wedding. Now, I am going to caution you whenever you're building these not to build them too far in advance because as you can see with the prototype, these beads have already started to absorb that water and which is why we're getting that cloudy effect. And so make sure that if you are preparing this for an event, you are going to have a team that is going to prepare this maybe an hour to 45 minutes before you are ready to use them. If not, you are going to run the risk of having your water look cloudy or worse, having those beads pop up out of the top of your centerpiece and we won't want that. But I really enjoy creating this project with you guys today. To my Dar Danny's darlings, I say thank you for all of the comments the questions, the suggestions, the thumbs up. I humbly ask you guys to keep them coming. And if you are on this channel today because you just happened across it, you saw maybe a thumbnail that piqued your attention, please be sure to consider joining our ever-growing community of DIYers. And if you so choose to join our community, please be sure to click the notification bell to ensure that you will be made aware of any time one of my videos are published. Listen, my darlings, it has been a pleasure working with you guys. I look forward until the next time we see each other again. And until then, I bid you guys farewell. And I say to you, be well, take care, know that I love you all. Bye now.